Atraxa is a very strong Magic the Gathering card. When it enters the battlefield, you can look at the top 10 cards of your library and take one card of each type and put it into your hand. Now, this card is 7 mana, so I'm not looking to hard cast it in this video. We are looking to cheat it into play with Goryeo's Vengeance and use Ephemerate to keep it on the board. Now this deck doesn't just win with Atraxa. As we have Ephemerate, we are playing two of the Degenerate Pitch Elementals as it allows us to steal games by evoking one of the Elementals and using Ephemerate before it is sacrificed to the Evoke Trigger so that it stays on the board. We also play Gristlebrand as a 2 of, as it is great in the early game, but we don't play as many as Atraxa as Atraxa is generally better in this strategy. Take this example when I was low against Death Shadow. I wouldn't be able to draw cards with Gristlebrand if Atraxa was the Gristlebrand here, and the Atraxa does let us look at the top 10 and find us the cards we need to survive. Overall, I really like this deck in modern right now, and if you want to play it, then I have a cyber guide up on my Patreon as always for today's deck. Starting the first round, on the play we have a great opening hand with Faithful Mending, Leyline Binding, and an Atraxa. Faithful Mending is great to put Atraxa into the graveyard and to control our land heavy hand, and Leyline Binding is great with the Triumphs in our deck because it will cost 1 mana if we get both of these Triumphs into play, and that's easy because our fetch lands can fetch both of them. Our opponent starts off the game with a Colonnade and we find a Shadow Prophecy. Both Faithful Mending and Shadow Prophecy are great against control because we're just going to operate on their end step and make sure that we can waste their mana for all their counter spells that they're wanting to hold up. And that's exactly what happens. The opponent and I both play our lands and say go, but things are nice for us when we can cast Shadow Prophecy on their end step and it does resolve. We find a Goryeo's Vengeance and a Tainted Indulgence so we can keep operating on the opponent's end step, making their life as awkward as possible. Now we draw Gristlebrand for turn, so we're just going to play our land and pass back to continue to make their life awkward and make sure that they can't spend their mana. And what a surprise, all they can do is play their land and go to their end step, and now we can use Tainted Indulgence as card advantage. If you look in the graveyard, we have five different converted mana costs, meaning the Tainted Indulgence just draws two cards and we don't have to discard. This finds us a collective brutality, and now we can see what's in the opponent's hand and discard this Gristlebrand so we can work towards casting this Goryeo's. The opponent does counterspell the Collective Brutality, and I'm just going to slam the Goryeo's Vengeance here because at the end of the day, it is hard to have two counterspells in the blind, and if they have it, they have it. Surprisingly, the control player does not have it. We get this Atraxa down, and we get a load of cards in hand, and with an Ephemerate, we can Ephemerate this Atraxa to keep it around. Now, after Ephemerating Atraxa, we will have a ton of cards in hand, but we do find a Grief, which is perfect here, as we're going to discard cards, so we might as well pitch some of them to the Evoke Elementals anyways. After looking at the opponent's hand and just seeing two Teferis and a Prismatic Ending, I think you can all see where this game is going, so let's just speed it up a bit. The opponent does bounce our Atraxa, but we are able to both take the Prismatic Ending and double Goryeo's Vengeance to just attack the opponent for 14 lifelink. After casting the second Goryeo's, the opponent concedes the game. Before we go into boarding, I just want to say if you enjoy my content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It supports me a lot and over 70% of you aren't subscribed. Thank you all for your continued support. Going into boarding, Solitude doesn't seem great. Let's bring in two Silence and two Teferi Time Raveler to try and interact with all of their counter spells that they're going to have. Going into game two, I don't think I have to justify why this hand is very good, so let's just keep it and see how the game plays out. Surprisingly, the control matchup again plays very slow on the early turns, but it gets very interesting when we get to the third turn. The opponent uses their 3 mana to tap out for Teferi Time Raveler. Now that is quite unfortunate, but we can Tainted Indulgence in response to try and fill up our graveyard and find a Goryeo's Vengeance, which we do. The opponent then just draws a card with their Teferi Time Raveler and pass back the turn. I am going to silence here because I'm afraid of cards like Force of Negation and Solitude, and then now we can Goryeo's Vengeance the Atraxa and look at the top 10 cards of our library. What's great is we do find a lot of cards. We find a Planeswalker, an Enchantment, a Goryeo's Vengeance, a Gristlebrand, and a Land. A lot of options for us to take here, but I think just setting up for a second Goryeo's Vengeance next turn is what we want to do. As the Atraxa has haste, we can kill the Teferi Time Raveler, and as I have a lot of 3 mana spells, I decide to pitch Shadow Prophecy to the Grief as we want to discard the Gristlebrand to our discard step. Now this decision isn't easy. The opponent has 2 counter spells, 2 Leyline Binding, and a Wilderness Reclamation. I thought for a very long time, but I decided that I'm going to take the Wilderness Reclamation so that my opponent has to hold up mana for the rest of the game, and we're going to be trying to beat them like we did game 1. Make life really awkward for the opponent, 
force them to hold up a load of mana, and they only have two blue sources in play right now, so they can only theoretically cast one counterspell or one mystical dispute. Now, this plan worked a little too well. <laughs> For the rest of the game, nothing really happened. The opponent obviously was mana screwed and needed to draw lands, and we just had both mana and card advantage and card draw, so we eventually sculpted our hand to have this grief ephemerate hand with the Gorio's Vengeance. Now, what I decided to do was pass and use Faithful Mending from hand, and we found a second Gorio's Vengeance. So this is almost a guaranteed win with the opponent having a Counterspell and a Mystical Dispute, because we can Gorio's Vengeance on their end step, and they will be forced to use a Counterspell. Then we can Grief on our turn, they'll be forced to use a Counterspell, which they do, and then we can cast a Fairy Time Raveler, which they will be forced to use a Counterspell, which they don't. So now we can Gorio's Vengeance plus Ephemerate and instantly win the game. Interesting combination of cards to win that is definitely very anti-control, but I think this deck is just anti-control. Having ways to operate on the end step, an instant win two mana combo card, and the opponent not having something like Endurance definitely made this game a lot easier. Going into the next round, we have a Grief double Leyline Binding with Shadow Prophecy hand. I really like Shadow Prophecy in this deck because it helps us refuel very quickly, so we're going to start off with a Grief to disrupt the opponent, and then hope to follow up with a Shadow Prophecy to refill. What's great is we can see the opponent is on Devoted Druid Combo, one of our best matchups because half of our deck is removal spells, and half of our deck is cheating a massive 7-7 seven, seven lifelink draw a card creature into play, which they can't really deal with. After playing our fetch land, the opponent follows up with a Stoneforge Mystic that they drew for turn, and get a Luxier Giada's Gift. Now I'm not going to Leyline Binding a Stoneforge Mystic when I know their whole hand, and their equipment's a 1 mana artifact, so let's just continue to hit our land drops, and try to cast a Shadow Prophecy to work towards a combo kill. The opponent does follow up with an Urza Saga and a Vizier of Remedies to try and work towards a combo kill, as they have the Finale of Devastation in hand, but this is totally fine for us, so let's Shadow Prophecy and find this Gorio's Vengeance. What's even more powerful is Shadow Prophecy found in Atraxa 2, and the way Shadow Prophecy is worded is it'll put the cards into the graveyard. So now we can Gorio's Vengeance, get back the Atraxa, and essentially win the game. As our deck is loaded with removal spells, it is so easy to find ways to interact with the opponent's board. Look at our hand. We have three Ley Lines Binding that cost one mana, we have Solitude and Ephemerate if we want to just wipe the opponent's board, and we can just evoke Grief to take some cards from their hand, they are so dead in this spot, it is insane. What's even funnier is we looked at the top 20 cards of our library and picked the best cards to put in our hand. We wiped their board, wiped their hand, and we still didn't have to go to discard. This is how powerful the evoke elementals are in this deck, and the opponent just has to concede the game. If we didn't have enough removal game 1, we're adding 4 prismatic ending for game 2. This deck loves creature decks. For example, playing against Hammer Time is very easy because you just kill everything like you do in this Devoted Druid matchup. What makes things even rougher is I have an amazing opening 7 with 4 removal spells, because we can ephemerate the Solitude by the way, but the opponent mulligans to 5, so I think you can see where this game is going, I'll just speed things up to save you time on this earth. To sum up this game, my opponent casts a creature, I cast a removal spell. My opponent casts another creature, I cast another removal spell. My opponent casts a rubbish creature, I cast a grief and start attacking them, and then I start casting removal spells. Then the opponent casts their final creature, I ephemerate them in their draw step, they cast a creature, and I cast a removal spell. Who would be surprised that this deck is good against the creature decks? Now, obviously, we didn't win every game of Magic the Gathering, because decks aren't perfect. In game 1 against Indomitable Creativity, we got stuck on 3 lands and just couldn't find a Gorio's Vengeance to combo kill. In game 2 though, we managed to disrupt the opponent enough to both Gorio's Vengeance them and attack him with a Gristlebrand. But in game 3, things really didn't go our way. Going through 50% of our deck, the top 30 cards, we couldn't find an Atraxa to win the game, so we lost the match in round 3. But these were the last games that I would lose in this tournament. In round 4, yet again, we crushed 4 color control. Control decks really struggle against us because they both can't tap out and can't disrupt us really because you can Gorio's Vengeance in response to anything. After knowing their hand with grief, we could slam the Teferi Time Raveler, bounce the Leyline's Binding and get back in the Atraxa to win the match. 
Then in round 5, we played against Eldrazitron, which was a very easy matchup because again, any deck that's playing creatures or permanents to win without any counter spells or disruption is very easy to beat. We ended up winning game 2 just by beating them down with grief and solitude, ending us up at 4-1 with 5 chess. As always, for you gambling degenerates, I'll make sure to open these chests at the end of the video. As always, check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it, and thank you to all of my existing Patreons.